Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. My name is Robert. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we're continuing to look at uh, the book of Psalms as we go through uh, this uh, so far here in 2023. We're going to be in Psalms 86. Uh, and as we uh, look at that, and if you've got a Bible handy, I encourage you to open that up uh, and follow along. Uh, but as we look at that, let me ask you a question. How do you normally respond when things don't go well? Uh, maybe when you've got a plan that, that gets derailed, when life is difficult, uh, maybe you've got a plan for the day and one thing interrupts the plan. Are you able to get back on track or does everything just get tossed? If you're uh, dieting and uh, you slip up and eat something you shouldn't, is it just uh, buffet after that and uh, a free-for-all or do you get back on track? What's the, what's the, the normal tendency you have? Because I feel like for a lot of us, it's really easy to go, oh, one thing is off, so just we're just going to throw in the towel on everything now. We're just going to to live in the the chaos or the the failure or whatever it might be. And we see that a little bit here in Psalm 86. It seems like things are not going well for David because here's how he starts this. Uh, he says, "Incline your ear to me, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life from godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all the day long." Uh, if you look down in verse 14, he, he continues to describe his situation. He said, Oh God, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seeks my life and they do not set you before them. He's like, there's a bunch of pagans that are trying to kill me. They don't care about God. They don't care about what you've called me to save my life. So things are not going well for David. And it would seem like here's a time for him to just go, forget it all. Like I just go and got to go in survival mode and try and make it through. But I want to go back to this passage and see what happened in between there. So we went from verse 3 down to verse 14. Let's go back up to verse 8. He says this, There's none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with my whole heart. I will glorify your name forever, for great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. See, here in the midst of this moment of survival and just instinct response and him crying out for God to save him from these people who are literally seeking to kill him, do you notice what he did? He paused to praise God and to, to express his desire for all the world to praise God and to say, hey, you are great, you are mighty, your works are incredible. He's praising and worshiping God in the midst of this. He's also submitting to God's teaching. He, he says, uh, teach me your way that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. He's saying, hey, I want to do my very best to follow and honor you with my life. So, so I want to do that. His desire is to, to walk in God's path, even in the midst of this difficulty. How easy is it for us to say, man, things are really difficult and it's really hard right now and and maybe God's really not working in my life. So, you know what? I'm just going to try my own thing instead. That's not David. He says, no, I want to walk in you. I want to serve you. I want to be in your path. And he ends with thankfulness. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart. Even in the midst of this, this moment of of terror, of fear, of chaos. He's he's expressing thankfulness. He's living with gratitude. See, it's so easy for us just to think, well, I'm only going to do some of those things. I'm only going to worship. I'm only going to, to strive to follow God and to be thankful when things are going well. But in a very difficult, very chaotic, very stressful, very fearful moment, that's exactly where David went because he knew all along that that's the only thing that he could do. That's the very best thing that he could do. And all he could do was trust God, even in the midst of seeking to preserve his own life. And the challenge for us is to do the same. I hope that you don't have insolent men seeking to destroy you today. If so, please call 911. That's a a feature we have that David did not. But, But we have those moments of stress where life isn't going the way we wanted it to. Or maybe we're even questioning, man, if God was real, why does this happen? Why isn't he providing more here? And let me encourage you to do exactly what David did, to pause and praise him for what you see that he's done, to to submit to God and say, hey, I want to follow you as best as I can. 
and I'm going to be thankful for all the ways that you've blessed me and been working in my life, and I'm going to seek to live with gratitude in my whole heart, just like David expressed here. And I wouldn't be surprised if, as you do that, God shows up in a mighty way as you say, I'm going to worship you, I'm going to submit to you, and I'm going to live with gratitude in my heart. I hope that you do that today, Calvary. We'll see you next time.